How can there be hatred toward an entire group of people just based on their ethnic origin? Did Hitler himself create a legacy of hate toward the Jews? We never know the extent to which Hitler's actions made the situation for Jews worse, but we can speculate that his anti-Semitic propaganda and persecutory actions intensified hatred, creating a legacy. Adolf Hitler struggled a lot growing up. He lived in an anti-Semitic community in Vienna, poor and unable to go to college. He blamed the Jews for this because of their successes in education and business. After World War I, Germany had many problems such as food shortages, economic struggles, unemployment, and illness. Communities were chaotic and unsafe. People also had an overall disrespect and distrust of the government. The Treaty of Versailles resulted in a loss of land, military, and finances, which was humiliating to Germans. Germans were looking for a scapegoat to blame for their problems, and Hitler gave them one, Jews. Jews became the target of Germans' anger. Between 1923 and 1924, Hitler wrote an autobiographical manifesto called Mein Kampf or My Struggle. In his book, he discussed his political beliefs and visions for Germany's future. In Mein Kampf, Hitler used social Darwinism to support his views that a stronger people, the Aryan race and Germans, should have supremacy over the subhuman or inferior race which he considered the Jews. Hitler used Darwinism theory to influence people that there was scientific evidence to support the elimination of Jews. In Mein Kampf, Hitler glorified the use of war to separate the weak from the superior. All of these ideas and propaganda became the blueprint for how he would move forward in his quest for world domination and the annihilation of the Jews. People loved Hitler's leadership and direction. When Hitler became chancellor, he made multiple speeches in many different cities promoting his anti-Semitic beliefs. In 1933, the first concentration camp in Dachau opened. People began boycotting Jewish shops and businesses. Laws were enacted that did not allow Jews to work in state services or at universities. Hitler enacted the Nuremberg Laws of 1935, which said that Jews could no longer be citizens and many rights were eliminated, like marrying non-Jews. The Nuremberg Laws also sparked the Night of the Broken Glass. In two days, many Jews were killed, synagogues were burned, and over 7,000 Jewish-owned stores were broken into. About 30,000 Jews were arrested and sent to concentration camps. Hitler made life unbearable for the Jews so they would leave the country. However, once many fled Germany, Hitler invaded other countries like Austria, Czechoslovakia, and Poland and continued to spread his anti-Semitism to those countries. Once World War II started, Jews were ordered to wear the Yellow Star of David so they could be recognized and targeted. They were ordered to live in ghettos or sent to concentration camps. They were forced into slave labor and starved. Some had medical experiments conducted on them. At extermination camps, prisoners were herded into gas chambers and killed. The largest concentration camp was Auschwitz, where an estimated 1.1 million people were killed. The hatred of Jews was encouraged, and people were promised a better life and stronger Germany as a result. By 1942, Hitler created his final solution plan, which detailed the mass extinction of all European Jews. In 1945, Germany surrendered to the Allies. Hitler committed suicide in 1945, but his death did not end the hatred toward the Jews. His legacy lives on in the destruction he created, along with the consequences of his actions. The Nazis killed about two-thirds of all European Jews, with about 1.1 million of them being children. But the losses to the Jews are not just in lives and population. They lost their political standing, finances, property, opportunities, jobs, and possessions. Maybe most importantly, Jews lost their families and dignity due to the hatred Hitler spread. But it is not enough to just focus on the anti-Semitic sentiment in Germany, since some influential Americans also supported anti-Semitism and even Hitler. For instance, Charles Lindbergh believed that Hitler was a good ruler. Lindbergh preached Hitler's views that the Jewish population had too much influence and power in the world. Henry Ford backed Hitler and even received a Nazi medal. He published 91 articles in his newspaper suggesting that a Jewish conspiracy was infecting America. Given his social status, many people listened to his rhetoric. Another famous person was Father Charles Coughlin, a well-listened-to-radio priest. 
He publicly attacked Jews, stating that they had poor moral character and lacked patriotism. In one speech supporting Hitler and attacking Jews, Coughlin gave a Nazi salute and yelled, When we get through with the Jews in America, they'll think the treatment they received in Germany was nothing. Anti-Semitic beliefs had existed in the United States before Hitler, but this propaganda spread across oceans to fuel hatred. In addition to influential people in support of anti-Semitism, there was also many companies that supported the Nazi movement. For example, the DuPont Company provided Nazis with military equipment. IBM designed punch cards used in the extermination of Jews. Other companies, such as Chase Bank, Ford Automotive, Kodak, and Nestle also had some connections to Nazi Germany. Anti-Semitism did not end just because Hitler died and the war ended. Jews were not welcomed back to their countries after the war. After years of anti-Semitic propaganda, many still blamed the Jews for their problems and suffering. Those Jews that did survive the concentration camps were often sick and stripped of their money, goods, homes, shops, and businesses. Jews returned to their old apartments and possessions only to find they were occupied by others. Between July and September of 1946, over 63,000 Jews arrived in Germany from Poland because of the massacres of Jews in Poland. In Belgium, surviving Jews were not eligible for any public aid. German refugees in Belgium were sure to return back to Germany. The Jews who returned from the Netherlands were not welcomed back. In 1967, Poland had a lot of political unrest with much public belief that policy failures and other problems in Poland were due to the Jews. They were discriminated against in politics and academic institutions. Between 1968 and 1969, 2,000 of the remaining 3,000 Jews fled Poland. In 1972, during the Olympics in Muchen, 11 Israeli Olympic team members were taken hostage and killed by a Palestinian group. German neo-Nazis provided assistance to these attackers. Despite many disagreeing with the Holocaust, people were still prejudiced against the Jews. Eventually, the Jews' safest option was to depart for Israel or America, or to be silent and hope to be invisible to prevent discrimination or persecution. The State of Israel was created in the Middle East in 1948, so the Jews displaced by Hitler could have a safe homeland. However, this caused troubles throughout the Middle East, which are still going on today. This shows that although Hitler was gone, his influence on people's views of the Jews is still evident. It's uncertain how much of the current anti-Semitism is a direct result of Hitler or due to the years of prejudices. A survey conducted between 2013 and 2014 shows that 1.9 billion people in the world still have anti-Semitic attitudes. According to One Poll in Poland, more than half the Polish youth visit anti-Semitic websites that glorify the Nazi era. In Germany, Jews to gas was chanted during an anti-Israel demonstration in July 2014. On July 15th, the Jewish Cultural Center in Argentina was vandalized with a swat stick inside of a Star of David. In Australia, six teenagers boarded a bus of Jewish children and screamed, Hail Hitler, and killed the Jews. There are anti-Semitic organizations in the United States that preach Aryan white supremacy, one of Hitler's basic tenets. Some of these include the KKK, the neo-Nazis, the Liberty Lobby, the National Nazi Party, and skinheads. These groups have different ways of promoting their anti-Semitic beliefs and spreading Nazi propaganda. These examples illustrate the lingering prejudice that still exists against the Jews. As we approach the 70th anniversary of the end of the Holocaust, many feel distanced and attached from Hitler's regime and the extermination of Jews. But his influence is still present, and Jews are still affected by the prejudice fostered by Hitler. Was Hitler responsible for all the current hatred? No. But did he entice more hatred and worsen the struggles for Jews? Absolutely. Hopefully someday Hitler's legacy will be totally erased and Jews will be honored as the race that triumphed over hatred. Despite all this anti-Semitism, we should all remember the quote by Anne Frank who said, if we bear all this suffering and if there are still Jews left when it is over, then Jews, instead of being doomed, will be held up as an example.